Welcome back to Stormworks. I've been thinking about cargo. You can get $20,000, $30,000 for one piece of cargo. That's a lot in this game. So uh, I've been working on how to make it feasible. You can try and haul them with a helicopter, but helicopters are not really good at long distances, especially when heavily laden and in weather. Uh, and they can only really carry one, so you're better off dropping them on boats. So I built myself a high-performance long-range cargo boat, because you make more money the longer, the further you haul the cargo. So um, the idea is that you will load up your boat with six or seven or eight or however many you want, all of the good ones, all the expensive ones, and then you'll take them on a, a long trip. Um, the problem is that loading cargo is actually quite a chore, as anybody who's done it in real life can tell you. Uh, this little helicopter makes the job a little bit easier. It's easier than a crane or a car because those things require specific alignments and the boat might drift out of alignment or whatever. But uh, it's still no fun. It's still not great. Um, the lasers help to align, but they don't really do it for you. You've still got to actually do the work. And, uh, you know, I'm not a very good pilot. Not in this game. One thing you'll notice about the humpback, which is this helicopter, is that it attaches with the rear connectors first. Watch. Now, if you're wondering why it does that, it's because if you attach with all four connectors, you can easily end up misaligned, at which point the ghost forces will blow up your ship. So that's why it does that weird rear end, front end thing. Uh, the crate we're dealing with today is a cheap one because we're not actually going to deliver it. 3000 bucks. And uh, I just want to show you how this vehicle works, because I think it's kind of fun. This long-range hauling vehicle has some fun secrets. The first secret is you don't generally want to keep your, your crate up here. This raises your center of mass. So this is the loading platform. This is the cargo bay. By dropping it down into the cargo bay, you can really uh, uh, get a lot more stability out of it. Now, are you worried about water going in there? Uh, don't be. With only one crate, there's no chance of water going in there due to a glitch. And if there's more than one crate, it still should be manageable. So I'm not too worried about it. With that in mind, I'll, t I'll show you what, the, what, the, what this boat is built for. And that is long-range cargo hauling at the speed of light. Well, not that fast, but quite fast. Because the secret to long-range cargo hauling is to do it as quickly as possible, right? So we generally cruise at around 230 meters a second with this boat. The turning is not great, but it's not intended to be a, uh, a nimble vehicle. It's intended to be a fast vehicle. So right now we are going at uh, 200. We'll, we'll rise up to 230 once we get our bearings here. You can see that some of our engines are not in the water. Well, the more cargo you carry, the lower you ride, and therefore the more engines you will have in the water. So your speed should stay about the same, regardless of how heavily laden you are, up to a point, obviously. Now, the other thing we can do here is we can tell it to do all this stuff on its own. Go over there. Beep. Sit down. Why does it want me to sit down? Well, the answer to that should be pretty obvious. Uh, accelerating to 200 meters a second is not terribly good for the human body. So if you're not in a chair, you're going to die. You're going to get splattered against the rear windows when it does this. <laughs> but this all means that this is a very, very rapid transit vehicle for delivering cargo, valuable cargo, as much as you'd like. You don't have to only carry one box. But there is a secret when it comes to delivering cargo. And that secret is that you don't actually have to deliver it. Just like UPS, all you have to do is get near the door. And then, sorry we missed you, we get paid either way. So, you know, once you get close enough to the dock, do be careful, it's got a bit of zip, a bit of zing, you can easily ram the dock if you're not being careful. Once you get close to the dock, it'll say, oh, you made your money. I don't know which dock this is going for, so we're not making any money at the moment. But, uh, you know, you get there, you get your money, and then... What are you gonna do? Unload this crate with a helicopter? Oh my gosh, that sounds like a pure nightmare. Now there's something better we can do. Mm, drop doors, what are these? Well, I'll show you. The drop doors allow you to uh, just drop the cargo into the ocean. <laughs> You've already made your money. It's all you need. Close those drop doors back up. 
you can see that there's bilge happening. Uh, when someone, when a physical object passes through a glitched door, water does come through as well. And that's why we do have momentary water when we drop something, but it's quickly, quickly dealt with. It's never going to be a big issue. If we come down here into the, oh, we'll, we'll go back down there in a minute then. I'll take you on a tour. So the boat itself is very flat. And the reason for that is because if there was a tower, I would guarantee you I would drive a helicopter into it. So it's a super flat boat with only two decks. The upper deck with this U shape and the lower deck, which is basically the cargo hold. So uh, you can see that our, our radio is, is not really very high off the water. It's um, pretty close, and that means that we get really terrible reception, but I can live with that if it means not ramming into a tower with a helicopter. So the top deck here is mostly for the bridge. This bridge contains a large number of I go, RP spots, I guess. But more importantly, it's got these three stations. It's got the pilot station, the navigation station, and the uh, comms. So the comms allows us to look at the various uh, cameras aboard, and we can also receive and broadcast video, remote control stuff, and do audio. All of that is uh, obviously not terribly useful in this game, especially if you're just doing cargo missions, but I figured I should put it in. The sides of the U are full of useful stuff, at least in theory. Here you can see the status of your engines, which is great, except for your engine's status will never change. I'm not cheating with the status bars, I'm cheating with the engines. Uh, they are truly glitch engines that will always run perfectly unless you manage to d damage them by ramming them into something. We got some bathrooms, just for kicks, some places to sit, uh, and of course, a place to get all of the survival gear you might need. This is just a... Uh, uh, an area where you can pick stuff up and get new uniforms and whatever else you need. We can go out on, onto the deck here. And of course we can go out onto the deck here. It's important to have a lot of exits to the deck. This is the exit to the ocean, because the way you get on this boat, if you are in the water, is it lowers a ladder for you. It has to do that because ladders have an astonishing amount of drag, and if you're moving at 200 meters a second and you get a ladder in the water, you're not going to behave very well. It's going to be very erratic. At the nose of the boat, we've got some radar and a laser distance finder. Uh, and, you know, just a nice view, I guess. Uh, and we do have these. These control fins help to keep our nose down in the water because when you're accelerating at 200 meters a second, it's very easy to accelerate up into the air, at which point you die. So we don't do that. Downstairs, we can go down here or in the back. Uh, this is the the crew area, which is just kind of boxed out. I didn't actually make anything valuable here or useful here. And the crew, unfortunately, have to go upstairs to use the bathroom because I was too lazy to block one in. But, uh, you know, if you like interiors, it's pretty easy to do better than I did. Here we can continue down into this deck. It looks like a lower deck, but it's not. It's just a taller deck. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, you know, this is just getting into the engineering and cargo regions. Here we've got our glitch engines. We got one that runs at 176 and one that runs at negative 176. That's because we can't use a gearbox to turn this into negative um, rotations. The gearboxes can't handle this much pressure. So we have to have a negative engine and then use a clutch, which is invincible, to flip between them. Uh, that means we can go backwards. We can, we can just hold backwards and go backwards. It's not very fast, though, because we're only using the uh, propellers for that, not the jets, because the jets can't suck water in. That wouldn't make any sense. Anyway, these glitch engines run forever. You will never run out of power. Um, you can just live with that for all of eternity just fine. Back here, we've got the cargo section, which looks like this. Uh, when the cargo is in here, it looks a little bit different because it's full of cargo, but it's basically the same thing, right? Now, uh, this room is a lot more complicated than it looks. It's, uh, it's got, for example, these little octopus arms coming down here. These are not aesthetic. These are very important. Uh, similarly, these ropes, technically they're aesthetic, um, but they're just a faster way to actually attach ropes if you need to. Why can't I grab this rope? That's weird. Normally you can grab these ropes, but not today, I guess. Huh. Well, basically... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm carrying a welding torch, that's why. There we are. 
So this will allow you to quickly attach ropes to cargo uh, if you need to, or if you're planning to carry a boat or something. Uh, so it's just some hard points for you to uh, to carry uh, more um, dangerous cargo that needs to be locked down by something other than magnetic clamps. We've also got plenty of bilging. You can see that we are already quite um, cleaned up from our previous little spill. And here you can go back up to the upper deck if you'd like, or we can go back into the engine room. The engine room is uh, very heavy, and it looks complicated. It is not complicated. It is, in fact, quite basic. It's just a lot of the same thing over and over and over. And that is fluid jets with attached glitch rotors. These glitch flywheels allow us to overclock the fluid jets to about 400% performance, uh, which is quite nice. We've also got some propellers, which are all east, all also have their own flywheels, although these fly, flywheels run at a much lower rate because the propellers are much more limited than the fluid jets, and I haven't figured out how to overclock them. Uh, there's really nothing else back here aside from like fire extinguishers and stuff. The last room that you haven't seen is uh, the fort, the, the undercarriage of the nose here. And this is just a place that you'll need to get to if you accidentally ram something and want to repair it. But the ship can operate just fine, even if you do get leak in here, uh, because it's got bilge. It's got plenty of bilge. So, uh, this is a ship that is built to actually do the job that it's, you know, supposed to do. It's actually a long range, very fast cargo hauler, and it will continue to do that job quite well, even if it's full of water and beat up. Um, so that is the basics of, uh, of this, uh, little vehicle. And I thought it was kind of fun trying to figure out how to do, um, better cargo loading is the real key here. Cause that's still the slowest part. If we could load more cargo faster, if, if we could figure out how to handle those boxes, uh, we could really make, um, make this much less obnoxious, but I haven't figured out how to do that yet. So. If you know of a faster way to do that, let me know. Otherwise, here we are, just cruising along in our uh, cargo vehicle at uh, 230 meters a second, which is definitely a completely normal speed for a heavy cargo vehicle, as the Suez Canal recently discovered. Um, in case you missed that, there's a cargo boat wedged in there at the moment. Uh, it's uh, quite a bit bigger than this one. It's, it's uh, got more than eight crates for sure. <laughs> anyway, if you want this boat, it's available on the workshop, and uh, that's that. Have a good one, everybody.